Entertainment. Um, today I have a, an amazing guest. Uh, I've been watching this guy's work for decades. If you watch, if you look in the Hot Rod magazine, or you have you watch your favorite racer race, they've probably used his products. Um, he's been at this now for decades. He's a racer at heart. Um, today he owns a company called Hotchkin, Hotchkiss Sports Suspension. Look it up, um, check it out. They have great products, quality products for your car. Um, he's celebrating 30 years. I can't believe it, 30 years? <laughs> where did it, where did the time go? Um, 30 years, 30th anniversary today here at uh, Hotchkins uh, Sports Suspension. Um, today, please welcome my guest, John Hotchkins. Thank you so much for spending time, taking time out today to uh, meet with me, talk with our, our, our guests um, uh, and all the, the listeners out there. Um, how are you doing? Oh, well, I'll tell you, thank you very much for being here, for having me on the show, and, and all you do to make the car industry so ha vibrant and happening and, and uh, everything else. And when you mentioned 30 years, I just can't believe it. 30 years, it's, uh, it's gone by in a heartbeat. And just because we're in an industry we all love. Yeah, absolutely. It's passion. That's what drives us. Mm -hmm. And I know for you, passion is what got you into cars. A um, little bit of research, a little bit of background I learned about you is that your, your family, they weren't really into cars when you were growing up. I think you, you said your mom was an English teacher, your dad was a finance professional. Is that? That's pretty much, my mom was an English major and, and uh, she, uh, she was not into cars. She was into gardening and art and, and uh, making sure we were uh, being raised well and, and she was just a, just terrific but my father got into cars and I think we talked about this in kind of in, in a in a roundabout way his friends raced cars and they they kept talking about it they go to parties they go to whatever lunches and and it was a husband and wife and they had two car BMW team and he also had a 69 Corvette a CCA racer and so um, my father just was really intrigued he said, what in the world are they talking about because they were so excited about right, it, right. you know, like we are with cars, with the Camaro and the Corvette and Grand National, you know, we'll talk and talk and talk about these things, yeah. and BMWs and whatever else you're into, so he couldn't believe the passion, and he wasn't really a, a car guy, but he was a fierce competitor, and so then they invited him out to Riverside, he looked at it, and I remember him coming home, and I was just a little kid, but he goes, I can't believe it, they get out of their cars, and they're they're so animated, they're just like on cloud nine. Yeah, they're and adrenaline. Exactly, it's exactly. Adrenaline. So he, he then said, hey, I, I would like to try that. And yeah. uh, rented a car and went out to Willow Springs Raceway, and and, and the rest is history. <laughs> your father, you being into cars, and, and um, you talked about your father um, doing Le Mans. That was that, what was that like to see your dad doing Le Mans? I mean, that's like the race of race back then. It still is. I'm like, oh, it's, no, it, it was, I mean, it was mind blowing. You know, that your father was in the, the road race of road races, and, and the car that he did it with is right over there, the 1973 Porsche RSR. Uh, bought it, and he and his partner, Bob Kirby, bought it in 1976. Prepared guy, uh, Randy and Dennis Aussie, uh, who Dennis just recently passed away. What a wonderful, wonderful guy. Porsche racer and just a, couldn't have been a, a nicer guy. And and uh, anyway, they prepared it and it went uh, uh, Port of LA and, and uh, on boats uh, to through the Panama Canal to, uh, to um, Belgium where they put it on this this little teeny trailer uh, I think it was a two wheel four wheel trailer a twin axle maybe I think it might have anyway they didn't even know what the, it was uh, the winds was doing it and they were super good and anyway all this transportation would do, was arranged the car made it to Le Mans it was the only all American entry I'm obviously a German car but American drivers prepared in America and, and uh, there were American drivers but in cars from Europe uh, and so on. So anyway, they, they, they did Le Mans in the most amazing way. I think they had I don't know, 10 wheels. Uh, they didn't have a spare transmission or engine. I mean, the, 
they had a, enough spares to put on this table, and and uh, and it's something they thought, hey, let's let's go to Le Mans. We don't need all that other stuff. We'll just it's a Porsche. <laughs> it's gonna last. Well, lo and behold, it lasted, and they finished twentieth, uh, sixth in their class, and uh, the last registered uh, finisher that year, and and being at Le Mans and. Back then, it was still, you could really you could walk to every part of the track, mm -hmm. and I'd worked uh, preparing the crew, preparing the car, but I wasn't part of the actual pit crew, so I walked everywhere. I walked down to the Mulsan corner, uh, the straight, um, everywhere, uh, miles and miles and miles, and just got such a wonderful feeling of the place. Yeah, it, yeah. it was it was mind blowing. And then uh, he raced at Le Mans five times. And uh, with good success in 1979, in a Porsche 935, finished ninth overall. And there were only two drivers because their third driver didn't qualify. Yeah, the, the fat, the everybody qualifies, and you have to qualify within a certain percentage of the fastest car. Right, all the drivers do. And he didn't make it. Uh, so anyway, two guys who were not totally pro drivers. They they were in the finance business. Uh, Father and partner Bob Kirby finished ninth, and it was incredible. And being there, and then um, ten years later, I drove there with, yeah. with my father. That's and crazy. Uh, wait, so you drove that part? I didn't know you drove with your father at Le Mans. Yeah, nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, I did, that's unheard of—a father son doing that. It was uh, there was a, the Andrettis were doing it. Well, yeah, the Andrettis, John but, Paul Jr. and Sue, right. but there weren't many father son teams. Right, and uh, and then we did. We did five Daytona 24 hours, hours together. We did Sebring and did really well in all those races. That is awesome. So sadly, our car was yeah. fast at Le Mans and we're running fourth in our class and, and uh, it just had a major structural failure that couldn't be fixed. But no, to be there, it was the, well, it was the one race that I, I didn't want it to start because you're on the, you're on the, the grid beforehand all lined up with the, the people on both sides and me and just the just the sense of hey it's really one of ours the line. Yeah. And so once once uh, obviously there we start going and it's a race, you know, you right. know, you can't do it. Yeah. But sitting there with all those people oh, yeah. for me it was it was unbelievable. I, I can't imagine what that experience is like. And you know, you talk about Porsche and what Porsche means to you. Because uh, obviously you have the Porsche that you raised the mom, right, sitting right here. Um, were you always a Porsche guy? Like what was, for you, what was the first car? Because I know you like fast cars, it's obvious. But when you were growing up, what was that one car, the first car that you saw that said, you know what, it got you hooked into cars and got you into, you know, driving fast. I'll tell you, it, it was, um it was this car that's right next to me, uh, 71 Camaro. Really? Yeah. And I, I saw, I was on, um, I'm trying to think where we were. Anyway, we're hiking in the local mountains above Los Angeles. And years and years ago, and, and uh, it's a ski resort, but it hardly ever gets any snow. And uh, so we're, we're kind of scouting out where it would be a good place to go mountain biking. And I just remember, and it's called the Angeles Crest, and it's a really famous road, Newcomb's Ranch. Everybody goes there and, and hangs out after they've driven the crest. And and uh, I just remember this black '71 Camaro that had an engine that I still to this day remember as it went through the gears, what it sounded like. And and uh, so therefore, I, I love Porsches, but I also love muscle cars. <laughs> And, and man after my own heart yeah. and uh yeah man muscle cars have been wonderful to us and and uh, uh there's you see the we talked about this earlier but yeah. you see the yellow uh, 70 challenger over there yeah. it's called emax so, i mean that was my favorite car of anything i've ever had oh, sadly a week ago it was stolen in myrtle beach and brutal news i i saw I, when i saw that my my heart just dropped because that's the way, um, that's how, it was that car that I was able to get in touch with you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and build this relationship because we go to Cars and Coffee here at Lake Norman and we go to RK Auto, we go all the different cruisings and you'll see that 70 Challenger sitting there and just stand there and be in awe of it. 
and to, to see, not see that car there or here is just, you know, it just made my heart drop. And me being a yeah, Mopar guy nice. too, you know, it, it, it made it even worse. And we're, we're, we're gonna hope, be hopeful here and hope that if you're watching this, if you see that 70 Challenger out there, you know, contact Myrtle Beach Police Department and let them know because that is a wonderful automobile. And oh, and then I've always been a Mopar yeah. fan. The one car I, I, I've had them that obviously I've had that Mopar and had, had another Dart, which was really a great car as well. Uh, but I've always wanted one with a 426 Hemi. Yeah. And and as a kid, I, we used to look up specs at 454. Chevy and, and the 426 uh, uh, Hemi and and, and um, horsepower ratings and torque and everything else and so one day yeah. I want a Hemi but right now I mean it's I, I just love American Muscle and what's so good is we can we can develop a kit to, from the front bumper to the rear that people can take off all their stock suspension put it in a box put it on a shelf put all of our products on it, bolt it on, and then handles like a new Camaro or a new Mustang or a new Porsche. Uh, it's amazing. Behind us, uh, yep. that's my really Your it's, favorite. It's, it's another favorite. Yeah. View, it's, it's Bobby Allison's Buick Grand National. Wow. And uh, 86 Grand National, and he sold it to me gosh, about four years ago. Really? And uh, he's here today. And, Is he? And, uh, oh, God. You have, you have to come up and yeah, talk to him. Talk to him. And uh, anyway, I love that car. I just because that car was a, the, the Camaro, obviously iconic car, Buick. Uh, that the two years '86 and '87 with the Buick Grand National, you know, faster than the Corvette of that year, and yeah. and so, just such a sweet car. I remember that car um, going up against Mustang and just completely wiping the seat. <laughs> and I was just like, what is that? And the thing about it is, it was a very unique car because there weren't a lot of them. Exactly. It's not like they are in today where they mass produce these cars and there's so many of them. It was a very limited number of those cars made, believe it or not. And uh, some of them, you know, they're in, you know, not so great shape. Some, but some, some, like this one, pristine. Oh, it's great. Pristine. So we have it lifted up so everybody can see underneath yeah. and what we do. But that's what is so, so fun, really fun, exciting, really thrilling about this business because you get one of these great muscle cars and you can see the C3 Corvette, right? Yep. 72 Corvette behind us. Favorite body style. That's our latest project. Yep. Yep. And we, we don't have it raised all the way because we have um, all of our suspension underneath it. Yeah. I just had to look at it because it's pretty cool. Oh, uh, how can you not look at that? <laughs> I every like when you come to the Hoskins Sports Suspension, and you walk, it's like walking through uh, a museum of some of the your favorite cars. And he like he just happens to love the same cars that I love. Like I can remember the movies at the Camaros, mm -hmm. and I can remember I was just tell, tell, talking to one of your your staff about Corvette Summer. Like I'm yeah, dating yeah, myself, yeah. but it's like you remember Corvette Summer, and I was like, I mean, of course, it was ridiculous the way they made the car look, <laughs> but, it, the, but the body lines of the car is what grabbed me. Yeah, yeah. And I never forget that. And it's just each one of your automobiles takes you to a place where you remember, and it, it's just going down memory lane. And that's what's so special about what you do. Because you, wow, you make everybody's car, you make them fall in love with it again, basically. But you really you hit just one of the big points uh, about what we do because let's as cars I mean you can have a Tesla or if there's a new uh, Hyundai uh, Ionic Five yeah yeah, EV, yeah yeah you yeah I have the I uh, mean, you have a yours is a Kia, Kia, Kia yeah. but Hyundai has these and and Volkswagen yeah. and so on so you can drive one of those but you probably are not going to modify it very much. Right, and but you just—that's your kind of product you're in. You're driving it right. uh, every day. But then you think back, one of these analog cars that 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 have such great lines. I was in the the Camaro not long ago, driving down the highway, and these kids were in this G wagon, just fully decked, raised up, Fox shocks. You could see all this stuff, blue metallic. I mean, things beautiful. And I don't know what the purchase price is, a couple hundred grand to start or something. And, I mean, they had <laughs> everything on this. But they, all, they all, the, all of a sudden the windows came down, they're all tinted. And these, these kids, I don't know, 
16, 18 years old, and they all leaned out the window really far when I was yeah. driving this next to them. And you know what they said? What is that? They had no idea what it is, but they thought, they were saying, that's the coolest thing they'd ever seen. Right. Because these cars are so different. They're classic. Yeah. The looks yeah. are amazing. And so if we can make them so they're really fun to drive and, and, and you can get out and you have your, your EV for the for everyday driving, but drive one of these on a weekend, and it just makes you smile. It does. It does. I mean, I just, I'm a driver. We're drivers. Yeah. And uh, I drive, I get out and drive my cars. I don't just garage clean them because I just can't. Just something about getting in a car and driving down the highway and hearing that engine. It's just adrenaline pumping. It's, it's, it's just, you can't, you can't replace it. It's, you know, it's just, um, it's tremendous. It's true. They, there's such passion in these. Yeah. And it's, it's so funny. We, we built a car in, in California for a woman who was really deep in the automotive world. And, and uh, she, she designs and, and works on the highest tech uh, cars and, and, and products and so on and she, she, she bought a Chevelle and, and to drive that car she goes it is so fun because I turn it on and I smell it mm -hmm. and, and the brakes squeak a little and but it had all of our suspension so she really loved the way it handled but she, she left a carburetor she left uh, pretty much everything the way it was um, headers on and a few things and she goes you know what's cool too it may break down <laughs> <laughs> because you don't think I mean you don't think your EV or whatever new car is gonna break down yeah it's, and she goes that was kind of it's yeah. kind of fun yeah no and, and it's the the, uh, the breaking down and the fixing part of it and, mm -hmm. and and I think that's what people have kind of like why there's a little bit of resentment of EVs because there's that aspect of getting under the hood and getting your hands dirty and fixing something, you know, race it, break it, you know, the rinse repeat of, of fixing your own car. Yes. But one of the things that I've, as owning, being an EV owner, and I also own a muscle car, but as I was driving here, I'm thinking to myself, I'm feeling the body roll in my EV. I'm saying, you know, I would love John Hoskins to take this car, put it up on a, you know, on a lift and upgrade the suspension. What do you think about the opportunity uh, for the Hotchkiss to enter the EV market? It, I mean, these cars, those cars are ridiculously fast, and you need to have upgraded suspension if you're going to go fast. It's true. It's true. We're looking into that. We're, we're, um, you know, we're, we're we say uh, we, we, our success is going backward mm -hmm. into more. There are more cars that people want to, to drive, and, and our, 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 industry is getting broader in the fact that they're Pintos, Mavericks, Vegas, all these uh, galaxies, all these cars that weren't considered kind of muscle cars and fun years ago, but now people are gravitating towards that because, right. you know, Camaros are getting expensive, plus there, there are a lot of them, so people are going, and also people are going to the cars that they remember from their childhood sure. or, uh, yeah. and so on, or their aunt, aunt or uncle or whoever father, uh, mother had one. But the, the thing is that these, the, whatever triggers the passion, the cars were getting um, more people wanting to drive different cars. But then go forward and EVs, as they, as they become uh, you know, more, uh, as they're more around, we'll, uh, we're looking at that. That'd be great. I'm excited to see what's to come. Because I, technologically, you guys are some of the, have some of the most advanced technology when it comes to suspension and, and shocks. Um, you have the ability actually to change the damping using a cell phone. We, we can do that. Can you talk got... a little bit about that? Because I don't think people realize the, the, what that means and the advantage of being able to do something like that. Well, it's on, it's on our Camaro and, and uh, it, it's on actually those three cars on this, mm -hmm. on this big uh, banner in front of us. But we developed uh, along with uh, Falcon Shocks uh, the ability to change the damping so you have the damping you like and mm -hmm. then there's the accelerometer in the car so it can tell g's and yaw and everything else and also uh, uh, braking obviously so when the car you can program on your phone so when the car goes into a corner and it starts loading itself it will then turn on one of the your set programs that stiffens the shocks or change the shocks to the type of driving you're doing 
So wow. it really it feels the car and then changes it changes it so wow. that it, it, it uh, you can be going straight smoothly, but then when you're going in a corner, it'll put the shocks more aggressive in the setting so you can handle much better and, and so, so on. So put that into context. If any of you have watched NASCAR, right, and you see them go into the pitch and they change the suspension, basically you're kind of bringing that philosophy to the average car out there. Exactly. exactly. That's that, that's that's exactly. So I, cause I used to watch that and be like, they're just they're changing the, the, the suspension. They're doing all that on the fly. Now you can do it through your phone. You can do it through your phone. We also we work a lot with JRI shocks. That's actually right across the alley, yep. and uh, we have some really interesting. Uh, shock absorbers or dampers on our new Corvette. They're wow. a reservoir shock and they have uh, some damping that really hasn't been around before. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're constantly trying to, uh, even though these are old classic cars, we're yeah. trying to reach for the most technologically advanced products to make these cars just have the ultimate in driving capability and right. experience. So you're right, whether it's adjustable by your phone, a new damping with reservoir shocks on this, the, our Fox units that are on our, our Grand National, it's always, okay, how do we take this? It's the four tire contact patches, because that's all with the car you have. Right. It doesn't matter what you do to any part of it, you have four surfaces that you have to make work the very best. Right. Get the most grip, the, the most, um, Drivability, so you manage those four contact patches with great suspension, and you have a winner. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. While you on the subject of shots and suspension, you constantly mention something that, for me, I'm still learning. As a car enthusiast, you never stop. Hey, learning. we're all learning. Shock development. Can you explain to the users what that is? Because I'm trying to understand what it is. Still learn what it is. What is shock development? Well, if you think about a, a car driving down the road, the springs are there to keep the car from from bottoming out. So the springs are there to keep to hold the car up, right? Right. And if you if you ever lower your car too much and it hits the bump stops, uh, or the springs are so stiff, it doesn't allow the suspension to work. So you re we always say you want the car as soft as you can. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, as long as it's not bottoming out, but the shock is there to dampen that spring energy. Because if you're, we, years ago, we worked with a guy named Dick Gullstrand and we were working with Monroe shocks at the time and, and they wanted to know what would happen if you took, uh, if, if the shocks all of a sudden wore out, blew out, rock hit them, they lost pressure. So I remember we all, we tested the car with without front shocks, without rear shocks, we had these bumps, that, and it was a certified testing area, uh, these kind of stutter bumps, everything went over. Without shock absorbers, the car is, is almost, un, it's undrivable. Oh, yeah, it's undri right? yeah. undrivable, yeah. it bounces. Right. Because what does a spring do? It it, keeps it, on, it yeah. just keeps bouncing because it gets, it, it uh, collapses, gets the energy, and bounces back. The shock controls that, that um, energy. And also you can do things with shocks too. You can uh, you can put uh, more rebound on it so it'll actually lower down. Uh, if you want, let's say in a certain type of racing or autocross and you want one end of the car lower for, let's say it's a front engine and uh, front wheel drive and you don't want the car to spring up on acceleration, you put a lot of rebound in it so that weight will stay there on the, on the front wheels, on the, the tires. So there's so many things you can do with damping, but it's it's so it's great to have an awesome shock company right next to us. We'll look at the dyno curves yeah. and we'll see. Okay, we need a little more compression, a little more rebound, or we will need to come in a little differently. And there's just a ton of um, there's a ton of technology. There. Yeah, yeah. It's it's always weird hearing you talk about shock development and damping. It's like. I feel like almost guilty because the cars that we have now, they do everything for you. It's like you, you, you nearly, there's nothing for you to do. But how cool it would be to be able to control how soft or how hard you want your shot. And I think that's something that's, uh, that's uh, kind of missing with some of the new automobiles where they kind of do it for you, which is fine because, you know, there's some people that don't, they don't, they, they may not want to go that deep into it. They just want it to be there and be ready to use. 
Well, we have two types of customer. Customers that, that don't want anything adjustable. Right. They just want, hey, tell me what the best thing is and I'll bolt it on and go. Right. And then others that want to tune on it, that want to change, they want to change the damper, change spring rate, and so on. So there we we kind of fit all the audiences. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so it's, it's great. So we have kits that just bolt on and forget it. Right. And it's pretty much the ultimate in all types of driving. And then others where you really can tune your car and for autocross or road course and, and better street driving. Well, I see we're getting more and more crowded, so yeah. we probably should get, get going and, yeah. and go see what's happening out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time. This was a pleasure to meet you and talk to you. And uh, hopefully we're going to have more content like this with John uh, as he starts to expand here in North Carolina. Um, remember, you started out in California, Started in right? California, yes. Let, tell the folks where they can find you, because I think people need to know about you, what, you, what you're about. It's, can they find it's you? easy to find this. Go to hotchkiss.net, H-O-T-C-H-K-I-S.net, or give us a call at 704-660-3060. But you just Google us, you can find us. We're in Mooresville, North Carolina, uh, easy access to 77, and so look us up. We would love to see you, give you a shop tour, and we'll do some more of this. We'll we'll drive some cars. Yeah, and absolutely. And we'll talk about, okay, how does that feel? What's that like? And and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have some fun. I, I love that. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Thank Pleasure you. Thank you. Thank you.